Hello everyone, Simon here with pack to live and this should be a fairly quick video to show you how to use the DD Hammock Superlight Pyramid Mesh Tent uh, with a DD tarp. Now this is the Superlight tarp which I have in my tree configuration at the moment in a bishop's bag. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is remove the tarp from the bag and take the ridge line off it. Uh, this should work perfectly fine with any square or almost perfectly square tarp. Um, you pretty much looking at a three meter square minimum to make this work the way it needs to. Uh, this is a three meter by 2.9 meter super light tarp, I believe. It's close enough to square, it's close enough to three meters, it should be able to do the job. Now, I wanna point out that while I know full well the method I'm about to use to do this, I've never actually set this up before. So you're going to be seeing this for the very first time as I do it. Behind me you'll see I have the DD Superlight Pyramid Mesh Tent already set up. Uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go back inside there and I'm going to remove the center pole so that the whole thing sits flat. And then I'm going to take my tarp out and get that ready and then we'll cut back and I'll show you what happens next. So key to remember, you want your pyramid tent flat with no pole in the middle but you want your pegs in first. Okay, so behind me you'll see that I have now taken the pole out of my uh, pyramid tent, or the pyramid mesh tent I should say, and what I have here is a ridgeline free tarp. This is the brown super light uh, tarp from DD, it's about 3 meters by 2.9 as I mentioned earlier, and I have four guy lines connected to the corners. Um, now whether you connect those first or you connect them after you've laid the tarp out as you're about to see, it's up to you. Uh, mine stay connected because when I hang this from a tree, normally when I swing, suspend it from two trees, the four corners get pegged out at a distance. Uh, my guy lines are five meters each, it's a bit much, you don't need that. Um, two meters should be more than enough, but I've got five on, five is what I'll use. You will also want four pegs. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the tarp and we're going to lay it over the top, flat on the ground, of the pyramid mesh. And the idea is to try and get it so that the centre of the tarp is approximately over the centre of the tent. Okay. So as you can see there, I vaguely laid my tarp approximately over the center of the tent, uh, the pyramid mesh tent. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend my guy lines out quite a ways, and then I'm going to peg them in at a 45 degree angle from each corner. Uh, you don't want too much tension at this point. You want things to be very loose so that when you put that pole in, the whole thing goes up together. So don't be applying tension to your lines. Just vaguely peg them out about the same distance away from the tarp. So we'll do that now. Okay, so with the four corners pegged out, it's just one thing I want to make clear. If you're using a larger square top, say the DD 4x4, uh, if you get it approximately over the center of the pyramid mesh, you can technically peg that down to the ground directly without having to use the guy lines uh, because it has enough width and length to expand up enough when you pitch uh, the uh, hiking pole into the ground. In fact, actually the 4x4 may sit baggy so you may still end up wanting to peg it out uh, on guy lines. But with a three meter square tarp, you're definitely gonna want to use guy lines because you need the whole tarp to sit off the ground when the pyramid tent goes up. So with the corners pegged, I'm gonna go in now underneath the tarp, inside the pyramid mesh and put the pole up through the center. And what you'll see from the outside is you'll see the thing start to rise up and then what we'll do after that is just level it off. It's really quite a simple process. So I'm gonna do that now. Okay. 
Okay, so you can see the vague shape taking form there now, but you can see everything's sitting really baggy, which is no good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start tensioning off each of our guy lines to bring everything into the center and tension it up into the pyramid shape we're after. And as always, you want to do opposing corners when you do this. That's fine, I need to bring it forward a little bit. So if I do the other front one. And, and the idea is just to make small adjustments until this sits where you want it to. Okay, that's basically it. I know that sounds ridiculous, but there you go. Easy as that. Uh, so the tarp is sitting approximately over the center of the pole in the middle of the pyramid. And as you can see, I've pegged out all of the corners, tensioned them up, and we have a huge overlap between the outer tarp and the mesh tent underneath. So what you see there is essentially the finished product. Now I know that it's got a fair few creases running down laterally, sort of in a diagonal, but if you notice carefully, you'll see every crease runs to a corner. What this means is that any rain that hits the tarp will run through down the gullies of the creases like gutters until it hits the corner and then it will drop off on the floor several feet away from the tent that you'll actually be inside of. The other issue you've got to keep in mind with this, of course, as with any raised tarp pitch, is the wind will blow straight through underneath. Now, that's great for ventilation, and assuming that you have an adequate sleep system shouldn't give you any issues. One issue you definitely will not have with this setup, the way it is right now, is condensation. There is no way condensation is going to build up on the underside of that tarp because it is fully ventilated all the way around. And remember, of course, that's a mesh underneath there. So the wind can blow straight through the mesh or at least the air can circulate all the way through underneath through the mesh. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go inside and take a look out so I can give you an idea as to the view inside of this thing. Okay, so I've left the door open, which you can see hanging there. And if you take a look at my guy lines, you'll see this one I actually pegged out a bit too uh, close in terms of the adjustment. And the adjustment knot is all the way at the end. So all I've done is I've lifted it out of the ground and moved it back. In reality, what you'd want to do is you'd want to uh, let off some of the, just, uh, the adjustment, take the peg out altogether and put a new knot further out several inches to a foot away and peg it there and then reapply the tension. Uh, the remaining guy lines are all perfectly fine. You'll see there's still loads of adjustment left on this one. About two feet of uh, tensioning space. There's about three feet of tensioning space on here. And similarly, there's about three feet of tensioning room left on this one. There's the knot and all that room to the peg. Okay, so you can have a second pole if you want over here and do a raised peak. And we'll do that in a few minutes so I can show you what that looks like. It actually looks really good. But if you look inside from the outside here, you can see all the way under. And when we go inside, which we'll do now, oh, there we go. I'm now laying down and as you can see, I can see out behind me. I can see out to the left. I can see out in front of me. And I can see out to the right as well. So I have loads of visibility in here now. I have a huge amount of ventilation. And I also have to say, because of the angle of the wind and the way it's blowing, I'm not actually feeling the wind on me right now. And of course, this mesh material blocks off a lot of that wind. Uh, the tarp is doing a very good job of trapping the heat. Center pole is in, it's very rigid again. Um, everything in here is actually very cozy. To be honest with you, I like this setup a great deal. Uh, I really do. The mesh keeps the bugs off, it helps break the wind. 
the center pole is being held firmly in place by the mesh so I don't have to worry about the pole sliding off to one side or the other. I don't even have to attach an additional line to it. As you can see the wind just picked up and the tarp is billowing slightly but inside here I can't feel any which is really really good. Uh, Alright so I'll take the camera back outside and I'll show you how it looks with a pole pitched. Okay so whenever I come out on a camping trip or a hiking trip uh, or a backpacking trip or any kind of outdoor excursion where I'm going to be spending more than one day outside I always have two hiking poles. Uh, the reason is they, when you use two hiking poles, you're taking a lot of the load off your back and shoulders and taking up the strain on your arms. Uh, and if you do it properly, you can take about 20% of the strain off your back just by using a pair of poles. With a single pole, that is an uneven distribution of load and you can start to get cramp in your back, in the opposing shoulder or even in your arm. So I use two. Hiking poles tend to be sold in pairs. Uh, if you buy the DD Hammocks ones, they do come, I believe, in pairs as well. I'm going to remove the furrow, the rubber tip. I'm removing the furrow, I'm going to put that off to one side. And then I'm going to make my pole extendable. There you go. And again, as always, I do actually recommend the snap lock kind, the kind where you undo a buckle, adjust it, and then snap the buckle shut to lock it. Mine are twist lock. Uh, it was my choice when I bought them, and I went for the lightest weight poles money could buy, which are these Leckie Carbon Lights. Uh, I will have a link in the description to the ultralight version of the ones I would recommend as opposed to these that are a snap lock version of the same thing. Anyway, with my pole in adjustment mode, I will go and rig it under the tarp at the front there to lift the front up and give an even better view. So one key advantage of this setup, aside from being very, very simple to do and very quick, is that there are acres of room all the way around the tent in every direction on every side. Uh, we have loads of rain protection from the overhang of the tarp and of course the flatter we pitch the tarp the wider the rain protection becomes but of course if the rain is heavy the flatter the pitch the more likely you are to have rain collecting in the tarp. So in order to deal with that we have a nice angle uh, on, the, on the tarp itself. There is no section of the interior mesh tent that exceeds or goes outside of the boundary of the tarp. So unless it's raining sideways, and I mean that quite literally, rain will never hit the mesh tent underneath the tarp. As you saw when I was setting this up, this took less than three minutes to pitch, uh, including the time it takes to pitch the actual tent, the mesh tent underneath the tarp here, where you are literally just laying it on the floor and pegging the four corners with a bit of tension on them. It is a very, very quick setup to accomplish. It takes no time at all. So by using a tarp over the top of the DD Superlight Pyramid mesh, you are essentially getting all the advantages and bug protection that that tent offers with added rain protection. And for most of us, that means we can just use a tarp we already have. So you can basically purchase the pyramid mesh tent itself on its own and use it immediately just by using your existing super light or three by three or even a four by four tarp. Uh, heck, I even imagine you could probably find a way of rigging up the XL if that's what you've got. Um, that would take a bit more work, but it can be done. Uh, other videos worth watching, please check out the video on the DD Pyramid Mesh Tent for all the details about the tent itself. I haven't gone into a great deal of detail here because I've already done that in that video. Link again in description. And this is a somewhat crude substitute for the pyramid tent outer layer, the rain cover layer. Of the, of the Pyramid Mesh Tent, which is available as a separate product from DD Hammocks. This is a two component product, this tent. Uh, so that video is linked in the description as well. In a drizzle, this will work. In a downpour, this will work. But if you're looking at snow or extreme and prolonged rain, you might find this setup eventually becomes a little bit problematic. Okay, so the DD Pyramid Mesh Tent is available on DD Hammock's website. I'll put the link in the description to the product page. Currently, it's on for £65. Uh, those prices, of course, change over time. The more they sell, I imagine, the less the price will be. Uh, so take a look and see what you think. Uh, for people like me, bug magnets, and you can, if you ask anybody who's ever been camping with me, they'll tell you that any insects around, they'll always go for me. 
I always love the uh, protection afforded by a mosquito net shelter. So this type of setup in fair weather is absolutely fantastic for me. Uh, of course, in sunny conditions with guarantee of no rain, you can whip the tarp off the top and just use the pyramid mesh on its own and see everything, the stars, every direction around you in every angle, uh, which is, is beautiful to behold. One other thing I'd like to point out is that the pyramid mesh tent actually holds that pole upright and it's incredibly sturdy. I was sat in there a while ago banging on that pole trying to see if I could get it to deflect or knock down and it simply wouldn't do it. They've designed a, uh, a very strong reinforced fabric cup shape that sits in the top of the pyramid and holds the pyramid shape but it holds that pole in there perfectly like a snug socket and when you knock it it just it won't move and the grommet on the floor in the bottom, the eyelet, that you put the pole through in the bottom guarantees the bottom of the pole won't slip around in the ground and it really does hold it very well. All that remains is for me to say once again thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.